Hello everybody, my name is Wasabi and I'm here today to make a simple let's play of Tale of Immortal. If you don't know what Tale of Immortal is, shut up. Uh, it is basically a game about you essentially achieving superpowers in a sort of medieval fantasy world. Uh, okay, let's get out of here. Let's start this, don't mind the other saves. Go to easy mode because I'm not really used to this game and what the fuck. Oh, okay. Anyways, what I was trying to say is that if you've ever play, you've seen Jackie Chan's movies and you know the Kung Fu in them, or like Bruce Lee or any just, like hell, even like Kung Fu Panda. Essentially, what this game is is called Jing Zha uh, Genre. Basically, it's you take Kung Fu and add magic to it that's basically what this is this game is it's essentially xingxia is a off branch of wuxia which is essentially where a lot of your kung fu movies come from especially kung fu panda jackie chan and the like and it's in a whole genre in and of itself if you've ever seen wuxia you might recognize some of this but this is very much more of a fantasy element uh, xingxia that's what they call it and I'm here to make my character. This guy looks pretty good, actually. I got really lucky on that roll. Let's go to his stats. Elder Dragon Aura. Oh, okay, okay. Let me explain something about the game. Basically, it's an, similar to an RPG where essentially you have these stats and you have some of these spatial character traits that kind of ex they're, they're basically like a backstory and as you can see it gives you stat boosts you know if i pick this it gives me uh, a banded benefit remove that add that and they're kind of color coded so red is the best blue is kind of mid-tier purple is better but um, not all of these are created the same, and some of these are not completely implemented. This is a Chinese game being translated. You have a very faithful... Oh, never mind. Let me re-roll these. I see there's no red ones here, but there's an orange. And it doesn't give me all that much tech. If I go with there, yeah, it only gives me some of these. The other one gave me all these, if you saw. I don't know what Elder Dragon Ore gives me. It's not translated yet. Yeah, some of these things are not fully translated, but like 80% of the game is. You will come across currently in the current version where there are some bits that are just simply not in English. English. That one keeps popping up. I'm trying to look for specific ones. Whoa. That's why I keep rolling. It's kind of, you can't really pick and choose. You essentially got to roll the dice to get a combination. Heavily gifted, tortured genius, wind, lightning, fire root. And you can't click on these and like keep rolling because it will just re-roll all of it. Now, I don't know, I could tell you what all these stats down here do. You know, but I think you can kind of tell by the names, you know, lifespan. That's how long your character lives because there isn't, like, you go through the years as essentially this individual here. And you can technically, if you play long enough, your character could die of old age. I've never seen that happen, but in theory, I think that's a thing. And mood is basically how happy you are, health, stamina. And again, a lot of these are sort of self-evidenced by a lot of the genre. The only ones maybe be martial arts, roots, and artisanship. Artisanship, you've got alchemy, forge, feng shui, talisman, herbology, and mining. Most of these are pretty self-explanatory, especially the forge and herbology, and especially mining. But feng shui and talismans, those two might be a bit different. Essentially, this, again, is a Chinese game based around wuxia, which is Chinese basically meaning martial hero or badass martial artist. You can pick one of the two. 
feng shui is basically your alignment and understanding of the way because it's a uh, it's taoism and a bit of buddhism mixed in if you know taoism you would understand that they don't really have a belief system similar to that of western mythologies where gods are basically these almighty powerful beings that can basically f with you whenever they want instead Gods have to follow a, like a way of the universe as much as mortals do. The gods are just more in tune with it and just know how to utilize it more and can do basically crazy supernatural stuff because of it. But mortals can also trick gods, kill gods, and do all that if, one, they're lucky and the god is pretty much not exactly smart, or if just the god is just having a bad day. Talismans are part of that sort of mythology thing. Basically, they get a piece of paper, they write a symbol on it, and then it does magically stuff depending on what you write on it. Alchemy, self-explanatory. And feng shui is honestly is mostly utilized for finding things in the world. You're finding like imbalances or like certain, you know, anomalies on the world map. There's a little button on it to show you. Foolish. Oh, this is going to take me a little bit. What am I looking for? Ah, chosen one. It's a really good ability. But I'm trying to find also potentially... Oh, Imperial Orphan. I usually start with that one. That one's pretty good because you... We get three. Uh, we get Fire, Earth, Lightning, and Root. We get Fist, Palm, and Defense. And we get this. Uh, it's not a good combination. If I get chosen one again, yeah. Let's go with yeah. You're probably wondering like what is like the wood, water, and all. yeah. That's kind of like elemental magics and stuff. And this is kind of your kung fu stuff, so it's I. It's not very. I don't need to explain too much. I think I'll go with this combination. We'll go with the chosen one, and we'll go with this, and we're going to be basically focusing a lot on what is it? Yeah, root. We're gonna go with wood element in this playthrough. Oh, energy overflow, gifted wooden. Hmm. Spear may be a good one. We want to usually go with one of these being pretty high and one of these pretty high, especially if we get a good combination early on. Uh, what do I mean? Uh, we'll get to that once we start ascending. That's an interesting mechanic that I would love to teach. Alchemy is going to be... I've never really used alchemy too much. It's actually a big component of the game, but maybe I, this, this round I might go for it. You know what? I'm going to go with this. Do we have a name? Oh, okay. We go with uh, carefree, romantic. No, I want to do loyal to friends. There we go. Oh, what's all this? Uh, sorry about that. I'm sorry. Um, basically, these are again traits of your character. I'm sorry that I didn't go into that. And what's this realm thing? Uh, we'll get into that as we go in. Now let's. We got all this done. Let's start the game. Enter the game. All right, we are back. If I remember to cut out that little loading snippet, it took way longer than I thought. But here we are. Uh, here's some here's some text. Uh, almost as though you've been chosen by heaven itself. Everything goes eerily smoothly for you. Why in the world are you this lucky? It said that when you were born, exotic flowers bloomed around your house and the tree bore fruit overnight. Some say you were born with the power of the ancient tree spirit. Staying single makes you happy. Your positive attribute has also earned you a good reputation. One day as you were playing in the back mountains, you walked into a bamboo forest. The atmosphere in the forest is eerie. It's as though as one has been... No one has ever been here. And of the breeze seems to be guiding you into the depths of the forest. 
Ooh, what's this? A stone tile catches your attention. You feed you f feed yourself down towards it. You you reach down. You basically go down towards it. Me, Lila. There you are. I'll see. Where am I? You call, it, you call it Ghost Valley. Who are you then? You can, call, you can call me Zon. Is this a go board? If you don't know, I have any idea what a go board is. Uh, you can look it up. Yes, and it's not going to talk. Uh, yes, and this round of Go has been going on for 3,000 years. It doesn't have a start, nor will it have an end. You can call this board the map of the immortal world. Honestly, I should have fixed the voices. And who am I? Where was I from? Will will I go? <笑>问得好问得好你是谁你来自哪里你要去哪里你的小友不如我们先手谈一盘如何我可以让你一字 Oh no I was trying to comment on how this is the only voice acting in the game that I've come across so far, and I forgot it actually existed when I was playing through and like uh, testing out some of the mechanics and stuff. Okay, now what are these three things on screen? Well, you essentially have a magical eye talisman, some basically yin yang coins, and a jade gourd. This is not implemented, this is not implemented, this is the only thing you can choose. Now if you click on it, you can kind of get an idea of what they are, pause if you want to read it, but as you can see down here, it's grayed out. Click on this, not grayed out. Click on this, grayed out. And what is this? Well, it's a... I'm just going to call it a respawn token, because as you can see... Oh... Okay, it doesn't like explicitly say it, but basically, when you die, one of these talismans are used, tokens are used up, basically shatters, and basically gives you a new, uh, a, a new chance on life. Basically, it's it's a it's a life token. Basically, whenever you die, one of these breaks, and you lo you basically lose one. And so, if you lose them all, you and die, well, you're going to die permanently. Yes. Permadeath in the, is in this game, and it is not fun. I've experienced it at least once, and hopefully the series won't end on me just dying too many times. So let's go with this. Well, that was a fast loading screen. Oh yeah, here we go. Whoa, what's this place? And who exactly was that elderly man just now? Tian Yuan Shan. Holy fuck. What was that? The one, the, that guy is like the only person who's ever going to get voice acted in this game. And he's got me again. Who are you? And where's this mountain? <laughs> The mountain. Let's let me let me talk to, to some people around here and see if anyone knows the place. Uh, what's this? We're gonna like. Okay, we're gonna disable that. We're going to at the center of the board. Scrub the woods. Mountain. I'm not gonna ever try to pronounce that name, primarily because I am. It's Chinese, and I do not know how to pronounce it. There is murder in the air. <gasps> Bad guys. Oh no! I better be careful. Oh, 
yes, an intriguing gameplay. Trust me, it gets way better later on. Impressive energy, and more than one. Who are they? Oh no, I, I don't know if I should choose new character voices. Good and evil can never coexist. I am the fucker sect. <laughs> the, fo the fo sect. Ying Neng branch disciple. And today I will take your life. I am never going to pronounce these names. They just look too hard. <laughs> a righteous one. No, no. Ah, a righteous one. Nonsense. You have nothing but a sanctimonious fool. Is it? A fight you want, the that's fight. <laughs> Holy crap, I cannot do that voice. <coughs> oh, sorry. Oh! Yeah, Dragon basically swoops in and annihilates the both of them. Now, this game is very much a RPG, as in you can basically choose what kind of character you want to be. Uh, for an example, as they are gravely injured, no doubt about that doing... No doubt the doing of that lightning dragon. What should I do? You can help them. You can just straight up kill them. No really repercussions. You could just observe or just let me think about it. Uh, It's advice. I would go with help both of them because you get affinity right over here. Whenever you like, whenever you interact with a character, you can get affinity and make them like you more. Thank you for helping me, Cultivator. I am Dong. <laughs> Dong Jai. <laughs> This is why I don't like reading Chinese names. A disciple of the Jing Ying sect. Yang Yang Ning branch or Yang Ning branch? Uh, I carry a recommendation letter. Basically, I get a letter of recommendation for both of their sects. Not, no, no, sect. Sect, not sex, okay? It's, it's very hard to pronounce. Basically says the same thing, gives me the talisman, basically, and I go through the portal. Gives me a little readout on the level I just did. And you're going to see a lot of loading screens with this game. A sec token. I just received looks a little bit different now. What's going on? Yep. It helps map out the word a little bit. Looks like a long look. As long as I have this sec token, I can find it the sect no matter where I am. I should find a place and to rest and collect information. There's a town nearby. Let's go check it out. Alright. This cave, I can sense demonic aura inside. If And even more from here. Should I go inside and look around? But why not? Sure, let's enter the cave. Yeah. Fight. I don't know who the hell this guy is. More Chinese mythology that I just don't know anything about. Hmm. Is this the habit habit of Habitat of the Wood Sprites? Holy hell, I cannot pronounce words. The wood sprites seem to be guarding the chest. It must contain resources that they've looted from somewhere. Let me see what they have got there. Yeah, you out. Pretty good as a first starter still. You kill him in one shot. Alright. Oh, the once you're done with killing all the enemies, the level will kind of just automatically end itself. You don't have to press anything. He doesn't have a head. <laughs> this is this is the ins interspatial ring. Ring people often talk about. Let me just... Is this... Is this the interspatial ring people often talk about? Okay. Oh, that's an L, not a, like an unpunctuation. Can't believe I could have come across one here. Basically, you have magic ring where you can sh shove your inventory into. You don't have a bag like in most Western games or, you know, satchel or whatnot. No, you have a freaking ring. And the ring has a pocket dimension where you can basically store stuff in. Don't tell me how you get it out or how you put it in. It's 
Uh, think of it like Doctor's Tooth or Doctor Who or whatnot. Alright, we're supposed to go to the end. Not the end, the tavern. Ask about the mountain. Where's the mountain? Ting Yang Mountain, let me think. Ting Yang Mountain, like in the legends. Unfortunately, I don't know where it is. Sorry, but if you were to go to the mountain, you'll have to leave this place. But we are surrounded by looming mountains on every side, so you'll need a flying mount if you want to do that. Is there any other method besides a flying mount? I can try to hike over the, the these mountains in the northeast, but no one been able to, pat, to make it past the mountains for dozens of years. I heard it became powerful barrier. It has become powerful barriers have set up all over. I heard that the villager is not far from here, but one of the villagers planning to move to the mountains. You might want to talk to. Okay, it's the first interesting part of the game. I should look around the mountains first, according to the. Uh, tavern keeper, the mountains in, in the area of, is northwest. What's interesting is this is a quest line, but this is very interesting. Okay, I'm gonna do voice. Who's missing, missing with me this time? How many times has it been already? Oh, oh, oh. It's happened again. Come on. No point in getting mad. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. You, can, you can't expect a normal person like you to just move a mountain. You've worked hard enough. Yes, I was right. He's moving a mountain. This dude moving mountain. I wasn't expecting this. As long as I'm still breathing, I'm going to show this mountain who's boss. Perhaps there's really a mountain god watching somewhere in the hills. You're trying to move the mountain may have angered him. En enraged him, I mean. No way. There's a mountain god. A weak little demon, maybe, but not a god. What god would trap our poor village inside these two large mountains? Well, only god w could revive the plants you dug up and return the rocks and soil back to their original places. We've been digging tirelessly, and yet our hard work is to no avail. I can't just sit down and accept this result. Come now. You know commoners like us can never make move mountains. Even if the whole village pitches in, we won't see any results in this lifetime. Even after my death, my son will take over. And after his death, his son will take over. I trust that one day, we'll move this accursed mountain for sure. Would, we, would these people believe me if I were to say the mountain's actually being protected in us all? Excuse me. Oh, Whippish Never, what do you need? You must be a cultivator. Are you here because you want to pass the mountain? Uh, yes, I've been living here for years. You've been living here for years, right? Do you know any way to get past those mountains? Oh, once in a while, some youngsters like you would arrive here, hoping to travel to the outside world. Not only... Th not, you're not the only one who we did to dream of the world out there. That's why I'm leading my family and other villagers in a quest to dig through the mountain in hopes of creating a path. But we've recently noticed that there is a monster in the mountains, and that can control the plants, soil, and rocks. It keeps meddling in our plans every time we dig up some of the soil and rocks and move them out of the way. We'll find them move back into the same spot the very next day, goddammit! Cultivator, if we don't get rid of this beast monster, we'll never reach the outside world. We need someone capable like you to take this monster out. Hmm. Controlling plants, soil, and rocks sounds like the doings of a mountain god. You are the village, or of this village, right? Yes. I'm here to in search of a way through the mountains. You just mentioned someone protecting you all. What did you mean by that? I'm not sure if it's human or not, but there's an invisible force. It 
keeps getting in the way of the villagers' mountain moving path, but it never harms the villagers. Years ago, anybody could hike up and down the mountains as long as they were capable enough, and of course, capable forces from the outside world would make their way into our village, too. Ordinary villagers like us would suffer at their hands and had no way to fly back, unfortunately. And then one day, a powerful barrier was set up in the middle of nowhere in the mountains, making it impossible for anybody to come out or in. We might not be able to leave the village, but at least we could live in peace without worrying about outside forces. Where can I find this barrier? No idea. No one in the village has really seen it. Alright. This is like your standard beginner tutorial quest. Quest? Quest! And it's this is another Chinese myth. Uh, the myth of the old man, the foolish old man moved the mountain. You'll see it on the loading screens, uh, essentially. But it's a, it's a thing about Chinese mythology and sort of culture where Chinese people don't see view houses and home like a lot of Western places do, like where it's kind of like in, in the Western societies, home is where the heart is. In Chinese culture, home is your is your house, your land. And if you want to move, you have to basically do some complicated stuff because it's kind of a taboo to move into a house that had once been owned because it's seen as you inheriting like bad luck any any bad luck of the previous family you sort of inherit and as you and when you move out of your house you're going you're transferring all your bad luck to the home which the next person to come into the house will inherit so we'll so let's get out of this let's do the quest oops i uh, can't do that let's do this soon you head up the hills and look around soon notice a noticing a huge powerful way standing in the mountains However, whoever set it up, however, whoever set it up must be a true expert in rays, as they were able to perfectly combine the shape of the ray with the topography. If the owner of the ray didn't want any intruders in the mountains, even a high-level cultivator would not be able to enter this area. However, here you are standing in the center of the ray, yet you are moving around freely, unaffected. After investigating around a bit, you locate the array core in a cave. This quietly close to the village, it is rather obscure location, and you don't think the villagers know about it. Approach the cave. As soon as you approach the cave, you get a sudden whiff of danger. Seconds later, a white figure comes charging at you from inside the cave. You're already prepared and nimbly dodges the attack. You scan the newcomer quickly and recognize it as a... The fuck? What the hell is that? Jeju? A Jeju. Dungu? Jago. I'm gonna call it Jago. Jago! The Jago barely leaves you time to regroup and collect and comes charging at you once again. Fight! Yeah, you're not really meant to win this fight. You can, tech you can technically win it. But, for the sake of like the game and the tutorial, I'm going to basically do what the game wants me to do, and kind of lose. You're supposed to fight it, and eventually technically die, but you will spare your life in the end. I've played it, so I know. Here she goes, she's going to go into second phase. Second phase boss mode. Summoning all the movements, shooting back at you. Okay. Oh, yeah, you can kind of see why this is fun. Yeah, you see? Yeah, basically, you you, you, you run. That's, like, that's kind of what you're supposed to do anyways. Because the idea is that you're going to get some stuff from the end. I can't fight anyone in my current state. Gotta go back to town and get some rest first. Yeah, it's it's like I said, it's a tutorial. You're supposed to be taught how to do stuff. Oh, yeah, it's based off of a month system. Whenever you move around on the map, you basically pass days. Oh, okay. A cultiv another cultivator has basically just come up to me and is like, "Hey, let's have a debate." 
It's basically you choose answers and whatnot. An old man is propen. It, okay, you can pause this. I've kind of done this. So, so help the person. Persevere. You can just pause and read all those, basically. They'll peer constantly over and over again, and I, I'll, I think I'll read the next time they pop up, And but once it starts repeating itself over and over, I'll just skip it. Oh yeah, rest. Before I challenge my enemies, I should find a cultivation spot around with the cheese abundant and train a bit. One of the main reasons why you want to follow the main storyline is because of this this little blue spot whenever a tile has like a little blue spot it's basically an abundance of chi or key that you want to go over and you want to press this little button down here essentially you're gathering energy chi into your body and as and you're working it into your like basically into your into your body and making you more powerful Think like Dragon Ball, but instead you're sitting on your ass and you're meditating, going, um, well, absorbing energy to basically punch harder. Instead of just, I'm angry, screaming, and I want to punch really hard. <laughs> okay, he's going to show up. You want to buy this because he gives you... Essentially, whenever you gather energy into your body, you're going to reach what is essentially a bottleneck. This is basically a limit on how much your body can handle the energy contained within your body. And the only way in the game to go, like, to surpass your limits and to go even further beyond is to basically eat medicinal uh, pills and elixirs. As you can see, use, use to break through chi refining early and reach chi refining middle. If I go to my character set, you will see this little swirly little bit right here. This is this is basically. Let me just do that. See, you're gathering energy and you're breaking through that ball and surpassing your limits, and you get stat boosts. What this is. If I should, can I click on it? I thought I could click on it. Wait, wait, wait. If I go to here, okay, here we go. One of the things, this is like Chinese alchemy and mythology, again, Taoism and stuff. You're basically gathering chi into your body and manipulating it in ways that allow you to ascend from what we are currently chi refining to foundation there are these little breakthrough areas in this process to basically go from i punch like normal person to i'm going to hit like a freaking truck to the inevitable transcendent where my punches can destroy continents continents yeah continents basically you're like the incredible hulk or you can go toe to toe with the incredible hulk and stuff like that but right now We've just broken through and become pretty much peak athletes. Of course, you know, I don't think peak athletes can shoot little needles out of their green needles out of their fingers, but uh, no, potato, potato, or pomme de terre. Um, I think that is going to be all for the first. Uh, okay, I'm going to. I'm going to finish this quest and get to, out of the mountain, and I'm going to end this recording. So we still got plenty of stuff. Uh, it wants me to basically buy one of these skills. Let's see what they got. They've got a, okay. They've got a wood and sword. Eight sword auras to chase down enemy. Okay, that's an ultimate skill. How much do we have? Buy that. Okay. Pause it. Look at the manual and other objects you have in your inventory. You can do the flash of inspiration when you see spirit stones. Right, I have spirit sense. I can use the energy to speed up my cultivation. I want this though. We are going to be focusing on wood, but I think we should focus on sword. Sword is awesome visually in this game. So I'm just going to buy that. But no, for the quest, we're going to go to inventory. 
going to go to the wood and here. Manuals are essentially martial arts um, like techniques and stuff. If you it, the best example, if you've ever seen Naruto, the nin, like the jutsus, this is essentially very similar. It's a manual on how to perform a specific technique, or in Naruto's case, jutsu. However, this is basically just um, uh, just a skill overall, but you can it allows you to manipulate key in your body in specific ways to get the results. And these are the manuals to show you how it's done. If you want to see what it does or how it looks like, you go up to here and you see it. Are you are you serious? It summons a thing to. Is this an ultimate ability? Did I get the wrong one? Exit out of there. I think I got the ultimate ability. Let's see manual pavilion. Martial slash spiritual skills. If you go hover above them, you can just see what they do. I think I got an ultimate ability. Yeah, I got I got a special ability. We need a. Okay, see. Yeah, I'm going to get this one. Just because it's, it's a little, tad bit better. Yeah, there's ultimate skills and so on. If you go to your skills tab up here, you've got these over here. you got your movement. Basically allows you to... Basically, if you're in your tight spot, you can use this to get you out of elf's yourself out of a rock and uh, stuck uh, stuck out of, out of a rock words i know how to speak them this one gets you out of a out of in between a rock and a hard place special basically my finisher ultimate oh wait no special is basically like your power more powerful move uh ultimate is like your finisher and your this is just your normal thing but in order to learn you have to go to here you got to get these manuals and you gotta click on them, and you gotta go down here to learn. You play this little mini game. Essentially, it's click on a ball on either left or right click. You get rid of the red by clicking it. Like right clicking, and the, the blue you want to left click, which you can drag it. Don't you don't have to click one individually. But you want to be careful because you can also destroy the blue orbs as well as assimilate the red ones. And you don't want to do either of that. You want to keep as many of the blues and get rid of all the reds. And that took us over the month. Yay! Loading. It does take a little bit. My computer's not the fastest, but a faster PC will work fine. But yeah, we have learned a new skill. If we go up here, here it is. The Hidden Thunderous... I'm just going to call it the Hidden Thunderous Spirit Leaf because I can't pronounce that one word. Just Hidden Thunderous Wood. <laughs> of course, it's on my Hidden Thunderous Wood. I'm sorry, I'm such a child. I know, but we should also learn a the ultimate skill. It summons a oh here it is summons a small flower fairy at the at a targeted location. Small flower fairy wins and only should she wave to to push away enemies within a certain range and deal this much damage. With a small flare will grant an ally primal energy. I th this one is going to be very cool if you were going to look at it. Yeah, it literally just summons like basically spectral swords to fly around and poke your enemy or in this case impale them because it's swords oh see what i mean you, you gotta be careful the red ones actually demote your progress but because this is like a tutorial thing you can't kind of lose it. Oh, you also want to get these spatial rings because and equip them. I, I almost forgot about that. I'm I'm gonna just keep the ultimate sword technique, and it wants me to go into town. What do I need to do in town? Is it tavern? No. Well, if we go to missions here, that will tell you what you need to do. 
by a martial skill and a special skill from the menu prevent then learn and equip oh i need to equip them all right let's go and equip the uh special all right let's go to the mountain and challenge the jingju again basically we've gone from basic dragon ball z goku to dragon ball z goku plus or after he trains with the king nami and the spirit realm i'm not good with names but i know it's goku after he you know trains with that guy in the spirit realm and he's become like much stronger and learned the kaioken kaioken <laughs> i can't get that under my head here we go Rematch, baby. I can shoot some too. I, I'm horrible. Like I'm, I'm horrible. I, as you can see, I'm doing more damage to her, and I'm able to survive a little bit longer. I'm gonna go into her second form. And before we could only take like several hits to take out these guys. Now we can do one shot. It's because we've leveled up and gotten a stronger skill. Oh, area of effect. Be careful. Utilize that, and she's dead. Yeah, special skills can be quite powerful, especially if it's like the sword skill where each sword does that amount of damage shown that it tells you. But if all eight of them hit, that's basically applying that damage to all eight. It can be pretty powerful. You managed to defeat the Jingju, no longer able to maintain its monster form, it turns back into a human glaring at you expression. I thought that that was its main form. It has no strength to fight back now, what do you do? Question it for uh, the way outside. Yeah, it's not harming anybody, it's in fact like protecting the village, so it should be fine. Mia. <laughs> it's just me. I don't want to hurt you. I don't, oh no, wait, wait. I don't want to hurt you. I'm just here to seek a way out of, out of the mountains. You, you can control the soil on plants in the mountains, right? With an array? Surely that means you know how to, the way to get past the mountains. You're about to ask more questions when the Jiangzhou just turns around and you're about to go after the Zhengzhou when you notice that it's dropped a book. You pick it up and leave the mountains. Bitch just left me. Ah, here we go. Skills like will level up as you use them, as you kind of gain experience into them. But you can bypass having to go and fight monsters. You can actually train, but... Uh, I think I'll show that next time because I'm about to end this episode with this quest almost done. Looks like I w want. To, it looks like if I want to help the villagers, I'll need to find these evergreen and take its soul out. Oh, uh, essentially, we basically read the book. If you want to read it, pause the video. There you go. Yeah, now we gotta fight a second boss. Uh, no. I got some spirit stone. You gotta be kidding me. Yeah, that's gonna be kind of... That's the only annoying thing about that is just how, how much it has. Yeah, and you'll get people that want to do things. I'll recommend doing the sparring if you don't mind. If you have a faster computer and just can really pass... <laughs> Don't get touched with that. As you can tell, I am bad at with games like this. This is basically a bullet hell game, and I am not good with these kind of games. I am not. Luckily, if you don't lose any of your health, you'll go back to full. This is the game that's meant to be far. Wow, I don't want to kill her anyways. I won. You won. Yeah, for the sake of time, I'm not going to be going through all the sparring matches, but after the end of the sort of level, if you lose health, you'll actually be deducted uh, your health per, like, 
technically permanently, but it's like you're just max health goes down until you rest up. Then you basically restore. Same with stamina. You'll just slowly tick down the stamina. Basically, this is how many actions you can do before you have to rest. And I think it's always 80. And maybe it boosts up as you progress through the cultivation levels. But the main reason why I say to do sparring is because of I were to go into skills and you were to go to mind, see how this changes. Uh, I don't know how to describe what these are, but these are important. Basically, these are like your passive skills outside of your like active ones here. And you have uh, each passive skill basically uses up some skill points. You get more by doing things like sparring and debating. And then if you build up to this, you can then convert them to get you more skill points to put more and more powerful skills on because just like say the pill like the like the the skills and the you know skill traits at the beginning of the game your skills also have quality to them these are the really crappy like super beginner tier ones but they will also be color coded with the quality going from this gray to eventually red and kind of going to the rainbow a little bit I'll show, uh, it's like, okay, here we go. Like I said, this is basically what I'm showing. You have your gray material, which is the lowest, then you got your green, and then you got like, I think blue next, then like purple, and then orange, and eventually red. Red is the top tier stuff. Do I have anything to heal me with? Oh, I do have some of these. Yeah, there's electricity and stuff like health pots. Yeah, you go on the map you will find basically these nodes on the various tiles as you explore the world and they're basically monster encounters and I'm not the best at explaining stuff but I am doing oh I didn't get all get all the stuff I didn't mean to walk on a pad Basically, when you go on the tiles and you enter the monster dungeons, you'll just go up to here, this whole thing. This basically is like the rooms, and you teleport through them via the pads you we saw in the beginning. And it's pretty much a clear the area before you can progress. You just survive the waves and kill the monsters, basically. Once they're all dead, and you can tell them by the top up here, this tells you basically how many monsters are left to fight and as well as creatures in the boss. Which I think count as elite monsters. That's what they're... This is elite. This is just normal. And usually you'll have one of them. Sometimes two. But mostly it'll be just a bunch of these guys and you'll have to fight them off in little waves. Now here's a boss. Oh, great. I couldn't see where they were little green things are coming out. Alright. Yeah, ultimate skill. Pretty damn good. I'm not Those aren't all ultimate. Those are special. I keep forgetting. Alright, after this... Oh, we got a level up. He doesn't have a head. That's hair. <laughs> this is his head. <laughs> yeah. This here is a monster encounter. Right, what I'm pointing at. And as you can see, a little sword or is that the saber or whatnot on the side? What? Basically, that's that's to telling the difficulty. The more of these on there, kind of like they usually the next one would be an X, and then they would have another one underneath it until they have an X, and then another and an X until and it basically says, hey, this is how difficult it is usually for the region. Sometimes you'll see one with a lot of them, but you'll go in and you'll basically just wipe the floor with all the enemies, and that's because. Your, the uh, strength is based on region. This little e region is your beginner starter zone. It's not very big. If you try to explore the map, it will open up, and you'll realize you got like basically this little area of the this little area of the map. But once you get out, then you basically got like this section of the map. But the thing is, there's a mountain range in the center, and it spirals out and like various things. I think it's like a star that like spirals out like this 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 or so on and this section is basically your 
beginner section. It's going to be the where the area where the monsters are pretty weak overall. But down here, this is basically you you basically reach that foundation tier we talked about. You go kind of this is like your kind of area, and then over here is the after the uh, the foundation level. If we go to skills, no stats. Yeah. God, I can't. menus. Yeah, you got chi refining. Basically, you're drawing chi into your body and you're refining it. And then eventually at foundation, you've essentially start condensing it into these little like droplets. At condensation, you basically are like gathered the chi together and begin forming it into a raw form. That eventually would be a golden core, which is essentially a little golden orb within your body. And then you'll you you'll progress. Uh, you know. Golden Core of Origin Spirit, Ascension Soul or Nascent Soul, Soul Formation, Enlightenment, Reborn, and Transcendent. They they all have their own little things, and these here deal with um Ascension essentially. Basically, at Chi Refining, you're going to have to cultivate here, progress this bar up, get the pills to basically break through until you need to go through here where it, you're breaking through a realm essentially you're going from i'm mortal to i'm i'm pretty strong but i'm nowhere near the big shot but i'm i have a foundation i'm i'm starting to get step into the realm of immortals of cultivators and stuff like that and here you have specific tiers of ascension essentially mortal is the lowest tier it gives you the least stats it gives you a lot of the minimalistic stuff required you know that you need to gather if you click on it you need basically if you read through this it'll tell you that you just need um one of these some of these for the basic one but if you want to go with heaven you know he you know like heavenly which is the best gives you the best stats and stuff you're going to need three of these you want to preferably pick all three of these ones and get one each of these I'll get into those in another episode when that comes around. For right now, let's just get out of the starting zone. And we're going to do that by going back to the cave. We're going to give the lady the materials. Knowing the, the animosity that the June must be feeling towards you, you decide to leave the Evergreen Soul or orb near the mountain cave before going on your way. Lady comes back days later and to the village, and the villagers watch as she builds a portal with the materials you gave her. The villagers are excited to discover that they can now leave this dump and go outside of the mountain using the portal. They're no longer trapped. The villagers are very grateful to the, to the demon lady. Uh, I would say monster girl, honestly. That's what she is. To the monster girl. They're even more in awe as they learn that what's been protecting the villagers. She's been protecting the villagers. And I've just basically given her the title of Mountain God Monster Girl. <laughs> oh, God. And with that, we now are able to leave. As well as the end of the episode. Seems there's a road not far from here. Well, let's see what that is. And it, go and check out what towns and secret sects nearby. Well, unfortunately for everybody here... That is going to be for next episode. I am going to edit this down a little bit and produce a, I think, relatively small episode, but one packed with a lot of stuff. Um, this is just, the, I was starting doing basic, basic beginner stuff, but I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.